Well, what a week for VR. The Vision Pro just launched. By the way, I'm still working on my video about it. Let's put it here. And the special computing headset was already unlocked to be used with SteamVR, also with controllers. On top of that, it received already its first beta update with Vision OS 1.1. Beta with some needed improvements. All while Meta is rolling out V62, stealing already some defining features from the Vision Pro. Also, Big Screen just launched a storage can in collaboration with VR Chat. And while the internet can stop talking about VR right now, that took a while, Ubisoft claimed that it was disappointed with the sales of AC Nexus. New big games launched these days to check out for sure. And so, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. All right, so this is unbelievable because it actually happened just like three or four days after the release. And some very smart people were already able to unlock the Vision Pro to be used with PC VR, completing with our PC to play Steam VR games like VR Chat or pretty much anything. To be honest, I was expecting it to happen, but that happened very, very fast, even for my standards. This happened using an open source program called ALVR that by the way also works on the Quest, it was working on the Quest 2, on the even the Oculus Go back in the days. And what this allowed is actually to stream via Wi-Fi because yeah, the Vision Pro doesn't have any USB connection to connect it with your PC, so everything will happen wireless, of course. So we were saying streaming wireless from your PC to the headset directly. I actually really wanted to try, there's a nice guide online on GitHub. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. Uh, it's not really plug and play. Uh, there's some steps involved because you're gonna have to create a developer account, download Xcode and kind of compile your own version of the app to then load it on your headset directly. That's because it's not available on the App Store and in classic Apple fashion, well, there's no way to sideload anything on it. Why didn't I try it yet? Well, because I don't actually use a Mac and the Mac is required and not just a regular Mac, but a Mac with a later version of the OS. It tried to steal header MacBook to do that, but it was an older version and being used for work, we couldn't update, so yeah. I think I'm gonna have to work on a hacking touch right now during this weekend to then try it out directly. But hey, it's working already. You can play even Beat Saber with it. The only thing you still have the overlay of your hands and your arms in there because, you know, it's not seen and as immersive application. To be honest, I can't wait to try it myself to use it with simulators because I feel like that there's where the headset will really shine because these screens are absolutely fantastic. The resolution is like off the charts because yeah, Apple did a very good job on the visual department. By the way, if you're like me and you don't have a Mac or you don't wanna, you know, compile an application yourself using Xcode, you might be happy to know that the guy from Virtual Desktop and the guy from Ivory, they're already working on the drivers to have it directly and then, you know, ask for the app to be allowed on the App Store. There are already some applications for streaming like Moonlight and Steam Link just for the flat applications, but you know, streaming apps are there, so I don't understand why VR streaming apps would not be allowed. But anyway, yeah, good news. If you can't wait, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. I'm gonna try to have it work as soon as possible, but sadly it's Bradley and the Chris Seeker already tried it out. And yeah, it just works. In the meantime, Vision OS received its first update, 1.1 beta, with some updates to the personas and apparently trying to fix a bug where you could not actually record in some like conditions. By the way, about my video review about this headset, it's gonna arrive soon. It's not ready yet, mostly because I'm using it like crazy in this period and keep changing ideas. Some things that I didn't consider like uh, useful at all uh, became very useful. I started to like this. Some things that I liked at the beginning, well, they became very bad. So also I'm kind of staggered by the fact that the stability of the system is not very good. I had many different crashes. So I really want to talk about that everything, also make a true analysis video, even if it's super complicated because I'm gonna have to use one eye on the side and put the camera on the other because the screens turn on just when it recognizes the eyes. So yeah, that's gonna be very, very complicated, but find a way to do it. But for sure, follow me on Twitter, X, and also, you know, subscribe to the channel because 
there's a lot to talk about, for once from a VR enthusiast perspective. But hey, if you have a Quest 2 V62, the new update for the MetaQuest platform is actually arriving, and that will bring special videos, the ones that are very good, over here directly to the Quest 3, so you can actually record with our iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, I believe, and send it directly to the Quest, and there you're gonna be able to see this special stereoscopic video in there. I have to say that is a feature that I'm really loving on the Vision Pro. I didn't receive the update yet on the Quest 3, so I couldn't try it already, but if you have an iPhone, for sure, try the experience because it's very, very cool. Another part is the gamepad support for the web. That means that you're gonna be able to play Game Pass directly on the browser, for example, or any other streaming platform and having the controller actually recognized in there so you can actually play. Before, you know, you could use it just in certain applications. It wasn't really, you know, system-wide. Right now it is, and so yeah, it unlocks so many possibilities there. If you wanted it, Facebook Live Streaming is now available for everyone. This was a release that happened actually in V58, but then they took it away, and uh, well, now they're giving it to everyone. It's not in beta anymore. If you wanna stream to your friends on Facebook, now you can do it. Oh, and also the YouTube Live Streaming chat is now available, so you can follow your chat while you play your games in a little window floating around. They actually change a single gesture when using hand tracking right now instead of bringing you to a sub menu it's just gonna bring you to the you know the dashboard directly and I think it is a very clever thing to make things easier and if you hold the pinch in your direction you're just gonna recenter the view so that's that but the best part of the update for me is the multi room support with a mixed reality setup so instead of recreating it every time you can actually have it available in different areas and the headset will recognize the space and you know use the game in that space that you have available it's super cool and absolutely super needed and because we were talking about PC VR we with the Vision Pro, there's also a new update because now Link will finally work 120 hertz because the Quest 3 is capable of 120 hertz for the screen, but for some reason Link just got it right now when it was actually available already in virtual desktop. Uh, but yeah, 120 hertz is now supported using the cable or air link. And also to actually improve the microphone quality. So, well, when you talk to people, you're gonna sound much better and much more natural. And that's kind of an important thing for a social headset like the Quest 3. Did you receive V62 already? Are you using any special videos in there? Let me know because I'm very curious of what you think. Moving on, big screen in collaboration with VRChat actually launched a new storage can for the headset, because yeah, the headset is so small that they thought that it was a, a funny thing to have, you know, a can with VR chat graphics on it to actually keep your headset inside when you don't use it, protected in there. This is just a quirky thing, but I love these kind of things, are funny and uh, they bring a message out, so super cool. What's not very cool is the reaction of Ubisoft for the sales of the AC Nexus. Apparently the game made just six million dollars uh, from the sales. It keeps selling but it's lower than what they were expecting and I don't understand what they were expecting like selling something in, a, in an already small platform. Also dividing it uh, for the platform because it's just available on Quest 3, it's not available on PC VR, it's not available on PlayStation VR. So yeah, we're talking about an exclusive and they're complaining that not many people are actually playing it. The reception was actually very good, but yeah, they're saying that they're not really focusing in, in VR going forward as much and not gonna invest as much. And uh, it's kind of a shame because Ubisoft really brought great games in the past, like Space Junkies. But we're going a bit long, so talking about games launching, Ghost of Tabor, the super fun looter shooter, actually finally launched on the Meta Quest Store, officially. This game made already 10 millions in revenue, and it's going extra strong, and I really see a good future for this one. It's super fun. I completely recommend it. Also, Vampire the Masquerade Justice just arrived on Steam VR. actually made a video about it. It's another super cool game with the new graphics. It's very enjoyable and also you can play with your favorite headset and not just with the standalone version on the Quest. And also another game that launched on Steam is Deathhook that is a shooter FPS that took inspiration from Doom to arrive this week on PC VR and PlayStation VR 2. But yeah, here we have it. This was this crazy week in VR. For sure, the Vision Pro is taking the world by storm. i never seen so many people talking about VR. Uh, 
ever. And yeah, you know, they're not technically like talking about VR, they're talking about special computing, but we all know what it means. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to see all this reaction. I'm actually, as I said, trying this on from day one. I actually flew to Florida to get it. It was a very interesting story and I'm gonna talk more about it uh, in the next videos. So far, I have to say that I'm really enjoying this thing. The price is absurd. Uh, if you want like a very quick thing, uh, there's nothing that is gonna justify the price. It's an amazing kit of technology for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy expensive. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna get back in here to actually edit this video. Here we go, now I can see you. And uh, as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, just like. Subscribe to the channel more on VR Tech. If you really love the channel, join the button on there. Little on further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons who join the channel, of course. I see you guys in the next video. There you guessed it, it's gonna be about this guy. So, well, 